Hey guys, welcome back to Ranger Survival and Field Craft. I'm Andrew. What I have for you today is how to use the restroom in the wild. Okay. Now, there are a couple of different ways to do this. Obviously, the reason I wanted to do this video was to talk about it because one of the things that never gets talked about is how to uh, clean up afterwards, <clears throat> not just after you use the facilities, but once you get back to camp and how to maintain hygiene in order to uh, prevent disease. I'll tell you a quick story. So after 9-11 and after US forces moved into Afghanistan, two female journalists were captured by the Taliban. One was named Heather Mercer. And within three months of captivity, uh, their sanitation was so poor that Heather ended up contracting uh, parasites in her body, worms that would live in her intestines. She, and she found out through uh, going to the bathroom. And she was able uh, to negotiate to get medication through the Taliban to treat that parasite or those parasites. And one night she was asleep and woke up to the feeling of something in the back of her throat. And when she woke up, she ended up pulling out a 10 inch worm. All right. And later on that night, there were more worms to follow, but she thought that the, uh, the medication was, you know, uh, ejecting those worms from her body, but it turned out that those worms, she was so uh, infected with the parasites of those worms, and they were breeding so fast that it was actually the worms were leaving her body because they had nowhere else to go. She was just that infected, okay? And so hygiene is incredibly important. So I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk about how to uh, go number two, and then a, a way to clean yourself after you go number two, okay? Now, there are a couple different ways to uh, um, go number two in the field. I have two holes in front of you. One is a cat hole right here, all right, six inches around by about six to eight inches deep, okay, for a single use. And then I have just a, a demo real quick of what a slit trench may look like. A slit trench is about 18 inches long, nine inches wide, about 18 inches deep or so now, for the purposes of squads to platoon size elements uh, being able to go to the restroom out in the field, okay? Now with the uh, cat hole, the there's two different methods. One I like to call nothing but net, where you just aim for the hole. And then the other one I like to call the layup. Traditionally is how you're supposed to do it, where you do your business on top of the dirt, okay, after you've di after you dug your hole. You use your TP, hopefully biodegradable, or you should be using biodegradable wipes. And then the wipes go in the hole. You shovel in the dirt and everything on top, and then cover it up and conceal it like you were never there, okay, because we want to leave no trace. Obviously, when we're camping, and especially in a, uh, you know, evasion scenario if we have to use the facilities, okay. Next, we have the trench, typically uh, dug inside a patrol base as part of patrol base uh, operations um, and part of the priorities of work inside the patrol base. And it's meant for all the guys to go use. Obviously, you want to let everybody know where the slit trench is in relation to their fighting position and then you want to mark it somehow whether it's next to a very uh, discernible tree or at night you have an IR chem light near it because the last thing you want to do is have somebody fall on this bad boy uh, in the middle of the night it's gonna be a rough long night for that guy okay don't be that guy you obviously it should go without saying never ever ever do your business just on top of the grass okay or out in the open we call those surface poopers, and there's a special place in hell for those type of people, okay? So don't do that, okay? You don't, last thing you want to do is be on patrol, take a knee, and you're writing somebody's uh, excrement they left behind. So don't be that guy either, okay? Now, let's talk about being able to clean up afterwards. Now, typically, you want to have, you know, wipes like I have here, biodegradable wipes. If you don't have that, improvised means of wiping yourself is a newspaper, obviously. You can use portions of the newspaper, even newspaper, old newspaper you find as part of trash could be a good uh, resource for that purpose, as well as you know fire starting and other things. Um, and then you can obviously use the nature, you know, different leaves and uh, you know growth around you. There's moss out here uh, growing in the open that I could use. There's grass. I recommend green grass. Uh, there's different bushes. I'm in a coniferous forest, and so obviously the pines keep their needles all year round. I'm not going to use pine, you know, pine needles uh, for the purposes of um, wiping because obviously that would be very uncomfortable. I would want to find big leaves that are smooth, um, and obviously plants that are not poisonous. Okay, don't 
don't wipe yourself with a plant that you don't know specifically. Make sure you identify it before or do the uh, plant test <clears throat> on your skin or a small portion of skin, sensitive skin like your wrist or something beforehand to make sure you're not gonna have an allergic reaction, okay? But out here I do have deciduous trees like aspens that lose their leaves every fall, but they're just now getting their leaves back and they're pretty small. They're not, they're not very big at all. But there are ways to, uh, you know, improvised emergency ways, I guess, to wipe afterwards. If you don't mind losing like a short sleeve shirt sleeve, like the one I have on underneath this long sleeve shirt, the tops of your socks you can cut away. Uh, you can cannibalize the inside of your pocket if you need to, your hand pocket up here, and use that as a way to wipe. You know, the, we, should, we should always be aware that psychological disgust actually kills a lot of people in the wild. And so you need to get over that fear um, and that disgust, I guess you could say, of um, certain hygiene items, just like you would get over the disgust of uh, gutting an animal, okay? And so we have, you know, cultures around the world, especially in the Middle East and some of the uh, Western Central Asian countries still use their left hand, obviously, for the purposes of cleaning themselves, and then they wash their hands afterwards, okay? So that's still an option. Now, out here in the wild, we can do that, and there is a method uh, or at least I'll show you a method that we can do to clean our hands because obviously the last thing we want to do is have parasites in us just like Heather Mercer did, okay? So we do our business, we wipe with our hand, and then what I, what I would do and what, I, you know, what I've had to do is with the fresh dirt before I pile everything back over, I'll use my dirty hand to scoop, all right, after I go in the hole and everything, but I'll grab some dirt and I will kind of get it all over my hand to kind of act as... A, uh, a decontaminant, if you will, or kind of the suds of soap that grab the particles and remove them from your hands, just like you would when you wash your hands, okay? But I'll grab that dirt to kind of get those major particles uh, absorbed in the dirt and then off my hand a little bit. Obviously still not clean. Now, you can use water like a bidet, so you can splash this in your hand a little bit and then wipe a little bit, splash some more to clean your hand off. Um, if water's in short supply, you may not wanna do that. You may, you may just wanna use water in a single go. And so what I have here is I have, I've gotten back to camp, I've concealed my latrine. Um, make sure, just as a, as a preface and as a note, that you dig your latrine obviously downhill or downstream of water. <laughs> Trust me, dig it downstream of water your morning coffee will taste better, all right, trust me. Um, but after I've concealed everything and after I'm done doing my business and I make it back to camp, if I've already had a fire, if I know that I, you know, I've had a fire at camp and I have charcoal uh, available to me, I can use that as a makeshift uh, you know, soap to wash my hands and clean those particles off. Because uh, believe it or not, the charcoal is the same thing, or basically the same thing that the army uses for decontamination kits. All right, to decontaminate yourself, and there are very there are varying uh, decontamination kits. I'm not a seaburn guy; I'm just a grunt, so I'm going to use the charcoal. So what I can do is take a little bit of charcoal, crush it up in my hands, okay, and then I'm going to grab my water. I'm going to put a little bit of water in here to make a slurry. Okay, and let me, let me come up close to you guys so you can see, look at that, okay? And I'm gonna use this to wash my hands. This is a way to wash your hands. All right, look at all that. Oh yeah, look at that. Now you wanna make sure you get under your nails, okay? Especially on the dirty hand that you, you know, did your business with. And then you can pour water on this, okay? So let me come back here. You know, if you're well prepared, you can take this with you, obviously, to your latrine location. And then all I do is just pour the water on, pour a little bit in here, and then clean my hands off as best I can anyway. And you're still gonna have a little bit of charcoal on there, okay, but it's a lot safer than not doing anything, especially. But it's gonna grab a lot of those particulates and a lot of stuff that may have been on your skin to begin with and remove them to make it a little bit safer. Obviously, make sure you clean your fingers very, very well, especially under the nails. 
whether you use your knife or you have nail clippers with you or you use a small stick or something or some grass or brush whatever it is just make sure you clean under there very very well okay but that's a way to clean your hands and then obviously we just remove the rest of the stuff let them air dry wipe them out on our pants and you can see you know i'm gonna have a little bit of charcoal on there not much but pretty pretty decent okay and so that's a way to clean yourself up and maintain hygiene after you go, uh, you know, number two out here in the field. Okay, guys? So always be prepared. Have that charcoal ready. If you guys know you're going to run out of TP or you're out here in the wild, start a fire. Let the charcoal burn down. Let it cool down. Have it ready. You can always save some from a previous fire and use that, okay? Because it is used as a decontaminant, uh, especially for sea burn in the military and it works out here you can also use a mixture of that and drink it to uh to help treat diarrhea as well okay but anyway a real down and dirty video if you get my meaning on going to the bathroom okay and then how to clean up afterwards and then how to maintain hygiene at camp so you don't get any parasites protozoa bacteria or viruses um, and maintain that healthy uh, that healthy survival anyway as best you can while you're out in the wild anyway guys Some good information for you hit that like button hit that subscribe button leave a comment All right down down in the uh, comments section. I always appreciate your feedback I thank you again for your likes your views your subscriptions your comments your feedback and your shares and I'll be back with a uh, cleaner video as soon as I can guys. Thanks